Okay, morning. Let's uh, let's start the lecture and. Um, So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to finish a little bit on the bearing there, and then we'll start an introduction to screws and power screws, okay? And then we'll go into the topic uh, of uh, threaded fasteners, uh, such as the stiffness of a threaded fastener, stiffness of uh, uh, threaded joints, body joints. And then uh, we'll look at uh, the design and failure of body joints, okay? Yeah. So. Um, the remaining topic on the bearing is called variable loading for bearing. Uh, this is actually basically one of the assignments uh, that you uh, you will do. Okay, uh, what uh, what this what this kind of a situation we're dealing with is okay. So let me give you the idea. What what is the variable loading there? Okay, yeah. So variable loading basically. It's uh, we're looking at as a piecewise, okay, constant loading, okay, piecewise constant loading. So uh, what I'm lo what I'm looking at is, okay, uh, we have a bearing and we subject the bearing, let's say maybe with a load, let's say this is F E one. Okay, we subject it to Fe1 for L number of cycles, L1 number cycles. Then <coughs> we subject the same bearing, okay, to Fe2. Okay, so then let's see. Maybe I should uh, instead of writing it over here. So let's see. This is L1, L2. So the first. Uh, number of cycles L1 for LU1, then L2 for FE2, <coughs> and then FE3, L3, like this. Okay, so that's piecewise constant loading. Uh, suppose that we have a pattern. You know, we the the bearing fills L1, L2, L3, FE1, FE2, F3, and then it'll repeat itself. Okay, so basically it's a pattern. Okay, which repeats itself. Okay, yeah. So <coughs> apparently, the idea is, if the pattern is going to repeat itself, then how many number of this repetition of the pattern that the bearing can subject it to before failure, right? Yeah. So that's basically the the first situation we're going to look at it here. Okay. So let's see the L and in this axis it here represent is the uh, <coughs> uh, the number of cycles there. Okay? <coughs> so the objective, okay, is to find, okay, so the number of uh, repetitions okay, of L1 plus L2 plus L3, okay, before failure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how do we deal with this situation in here. Okay. <coughs> so let's go back to our original bearing load and life equation. So if you re recall that the load life equation is what it's uh, F. Okay. E to the power of A times L equal to a constant. Okay? Equal to a constant. So that's basically whatever load that you applied, and then there's a number of cycles for the bearing, and that is equal to a constant. A is, is referred, to, you know, it depends on the roller bearing or ball bearing, right? Yeah. So let's call this constant K. Okay? Call it K here. So what we can what we can think of this we can think of if if this k is or this constant right represent basically that's the number of cycles when it fails so I can think of the k as kind of the damage I can think of it as a full damage okay so 
that's the full damage, right? If I look at it here, the full damage by a single load FE, okay? By a single load FE. Okay, so then <coughs> if I come back to this uh, graph it here, okay? You subject the bearing with FE1 for L1. So there's no failure, right? There's no failure yet. So just the uh, L1 number of cycles. Then I can, instead of a call the K now, so then I can let, let's say, uh, D, okay, equal to, let's say, FE, okay, so let's say still FE here. But instead of the capital L, basically the number of cycles when it fail, maybe it's a small L, okay? So if this is the 10 to the power of 5 number of cycles, this is probably just the 1,000, 2,000, <coughs> right? Yeah. So that's the number cycle you subject the bearing uh, to, right? Okay. So then the little d here I can consider as a damage, right? But it's not a full damage anymore. It's still a concept of a damage, okay? But it's not a full damage, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, it's a damage under F E for Okay, limited okay, number of cycles, L, okay? Number of cycles is this, the L, well, let's see, maybe should we see, L number of uh, uh, cycles, okay? That's another damage concept, okay? Yeah. Okay, so now what we can do is, okay, uh, what we can do is we can see that is, okay, then uh, if I have, okay, uh, this much, this kind of a change at a here, right? This kind of a change at a here. Then what will be the uh, the total damage, okay? Uh, given the current pattern, see what I'm saying, right? What the total damage current pattern here? So I can see that uh, I have uh, F E one to the power of a L one, and then plus F E two to the power of a L two, and F E three to the power of a and l3, right? So if that's the case, then the damage, right, underneath the three loading, the three different number of cycles, it's this much, okay, it's this much. And uh, if you have the pattern, if the pattern is not just stop at l3, maybe l4, so you just keep adding, right? Yeah, more generic ones, okay, yeah. So we can call this is the damage, let's say d, I using okay, a summation at here, and this is up to three, right? It's up to three. Okay, yeah. So now the next step, what I wanted to do is, okay, um, this is L1 plus L2 plus L3. Then can we find an equivalent load, you know, the equivalent load means instead of a piecewise load F E one, F G two, F three, find equivalent load F E, the last for F L one plus L two L three, and cause the same damage as this piecewise pattern. That makes sense? Right? So basically the next step of what I wanted to find is, right? Now I want to find an F E Q, okay? So equivalent load, okay? that runs for L1 plus L2 plus L3, okay? And we'll do the same damage, okay? As FE1, FE2, and FE3, okay? Yeah. So next step, we try to find this one here. Okay, so how do we find this? And then we can do this, right? See, this equation represents the damage caused by the piecewise load, okay, for each uh, number of cycles. If I'm going to find an equivalent ones there, so all I need to do is this. I can, I'll, I'll still write down this actual damage, okay, by the piecewise, okay, constant loading, this is the piecewise constant loading, right? I'm trying to find 
an equivalent load FEQ that's going to cause the same damage given L1 plus L2 and uh, plus L3. Does that make sense? Yeah. So basically, now you look at this one. Uh, this is all known. This is all known. Then I can calculate this FEQ, right? That's the equivalent load. So you can calculate the FEQ, which turned out to be this whole chunk, right? Divided by this, and then you take a root 1 over A, okay? So. That's your FEQ. Okay, that's your FEQ. So FEQ is equivalent load corresponding to FE1, FE2, FE3. So it's like a, uh, instead of subject to piecewise, you subject the bearing to a constant load FEQ now, right? FEQ. So the next question is if you subject the bearing to FEQ until it fills, then how many number of cycles, right, would that be? That makes sense, right? So then that, that basically based on the actual bearing, all right? So the uh, expected life correspond to FEQ. So that's going to be the expected life capital L. FEQ, so you use the bearing load in life, so setting is the bearing, uh, basic loading rate, okay, and over FEQ to the power of A, so that's your L. If you subject this bearing to FEQ only, as long as you could, until it fails, this is how much number cycles, right, yeah, given this bearing here, okay, given the bearing, okay. So you go back over this diagram here. We are repeating the pattern, right? We're repeating the pattern. And at the same time, if you think of the other perspective, you subject to FEQ only, and it'll last for about capital L number cycles, right? So then the idea is, if the question is, how many number of repetition of this pattern, what do you do? You use this capital L divided by this L1 plus L2 plus L3. Right? Yeah. So that's basically <coughs> the last uh, the solution of this one here. So capital L over L1 plus L2 plus L3, right? It'll give us that number of uh, uh, repetitions. Okay. Yeah. Number of repetitions of L1 plus L2 plus L3. Okay. Yeah. That's the first uh, objective. Is that good? Yeah. So, second one, the variable loading. Okay. So this is. Uh, let me see. I don't have a, okay. So that's it. Just, uh, the second one objective is is this. Um, I'll still deal with the same situation. Let's see. We have a piecewise loading. Okay, like this. Okay, piecewise loading like this. Then. <coughs> L1, L2, L3, okay? So, maybe the other situation is this. So you subject the bearing to FE1 for L1, subject to FE2 for L2, okay, for L2. And then, then you subject the bearing to, maybe I shouldn't draw like this, then you subject the bearing to FE3. Now, you, what you want is, I'm not gonna change anymore. And the bearing will be under FE3 for the rest of the uh, time, right? For the rest of the time. So then you would uh, you would uh, uh, interested in uh, so how long will the bearing last, right? From uh, this moment, okay, up to the end. So that's another situation. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So that's the second one here. Um, so basically, is the question is. How much? Okay, so how much life is left? Okay, how much life is left if next level? Okay, 
of stress okay, is held until failure. Okay. That's the point. Okay. So let's see how do we calculate basically uh, the remaining life of this bearing. Okay. Yeah. So very similar ways of we do in the previous case there. Okay. First of all, uh, we can do is okay. Here is the the total damage. This is not the full damage. Okay. This is the total damage. Okay. Maybe uh, just arbitrary case here. Uh, di here. Let's say this is Fe1a times L1 plus Fe2a L2 plus Fe3a L3. Okay. Right. This is the total damage that we calculated. Okay. Given L1, L2, L3. Right. Yeah. So underneath this assumption here, uh, we are not saying that uh, uh, we are going to last until the, the end of the life of the bearing yet, right? Yeah. So we we'll just say, okay, this is the total damage if it's just subject to L1, L2, L3, right? Yeah. So then let's do this. We're going to divide okay, both sides. So I'm going to divide both sides. by that full damage, the capital K, okay, by the full damage. So full damage is basically uh, when the bearing fails, right? Yeah. So what does capital K equal to, right? Capital K, <coughs> if you recall that, the bearing load life, <coughs> bearing load life, this is a capital K, right? This is a capital K. So uh, FEA is uh, FE is the uh, the current load and L is the number of cycles correspond to that load. That's capital K, right? So then, what I what we can do is for a bearing underneath FE one, it's probably going to last for capital L one, and for bearing underneath FE two it's going to last capital L2, right? And this you can calculate, L1, L2, capital L1, capital L2, you will be a capital if you have the bearing. And they're all the same, right? And you also have Fe3 and L3. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. And most importantly, the bearing that you picked has a C10 and L10, right? A C10 and L10. So all of them represent the full damage, right? Represent the full damage. So then what we're going to do is we go back to this equation here, okay? Go back to this equation. Because the situation I'm looking for is I'm going to subject this bearing to Fe3 and uh, for as long as could until the end of the life. So basically at the end of the life here, guess what? From here to here, the total, you add them up, which is actually what? The total, da the full damage K, right? The full damage K. So basically, this quantity, right? We want this quantity to reach the full damage, okay? Yeah. So in other words, if this quantity reaches full damage, then the whole left side will be, will be one, right? The whole left side will be one. And for the right side here, <coughs> For the right side, because k can take so so many different way, values here. So for ease of calculation here, so for the first one here, for the first k, I'm going to let this guy replace this k. Okay? Yeah. And for the second one there, I'm going to let this one to replace that k. And this one, I'm going to let that one to re replace the K. Okay? Yeah. And capital L1, capital L2, capital L3, you can calculate that based on the given bearing C10, L10, right? So those can be calculated easily. Okay? So basically, you know this, you know this, you know this. And at the same time, you also know all the forces, all the loading. And actually, guess what? 
you look at this one here, they cancel this, right? They all canceled. Okay? Yeah. So basically, you end up with L1 over L1, L2 over capital L2, plus L3 over capital L3 equal to 1. If I'm looking for is, what's the, the L3? Basically, the number of cycles that you can subject the bearing to until it fails. So what do you do? So the L3 equal to 1 minus Right, and then time L three. <coughs> so that's it, right? Yeah. So this is the the value that you can uh, have the bearing last, okay, under F E three, okay, for L three number of cycles. Okay. Yeah. Is that clear? That's variable loading for bearing. Okay. So let's take a look example. Okay. Yeah, this is basically uh, one of the assignment question. Um, actually, I think I tested in once uh, in the final. Same question. <coughs> a lot of troubles. I have. <coughs> let's see where hmm. uh, we have a uh, uh <coughs> radio load FR1 eight equal to 18 kilo newton. Much, huh? yeah. And FR2 equal to 30 kilonewton. We're subject this bearing to FR1 for uh, 200,000 number of cycles. And we want to calculate how much, uh, how much of uh, life is remained okay, for the bearing when you subject the bearing to FR2. So that's a pretty simple one. Yeah, I understand what you do. All right. So, so this is actually simple because uh, L1 plus L2 um, that doesn't make much sense. Uh, just a second, maybe get rid of this one. Okay. So uh, let's let's uh, follow our thoughts here. So F1, uh, I call it FR1, right? FR1. So basically, is the Fe to the power of a L1 equal to FR2 to the power of a L2 equal to C10 a L10. So let's say we're picking a bearing uh, from the textbook. It's a 0 to 30 bearing. So let's see, 0 to 30, give us, looking at the catalog, give us a C10 equal to 20.3 okay, kilonewton. Okay, yeah. So L10 is 10 to the power of 6. All right. So then we can calculate this full damage capital K giving A is equal to 3, and that turn into okay, this value. So K equal to this much. So that's the full damage, right? That's full damage. So if this is the full damage here, then when the bearing is subject to FR1 only until failure, so I can calculate L1. If the bearing is subject to FR2 only, and then I can calculate L2. So L1 equal to the total damage, the full, the full damage over Fe, FR1 to the power of A. And that gave us 1.434, 10 to the power of 6 revolute. Similarly for L2, <coughs> it's capital K, the full damage for FR2. Okay, and this is approximately this much. Okay, so if you subject the bearing to FR1, FR2 only for as long as you could, okay, this is much the number cycle you would get before failure. Okay, so then we get 
if now what we have here is the equation we just derived, okay? So small l1 over capital L1 plus uh, small l2 over capital L2 equal to 1. Small l1 is 20, uh, 200,000, and the capital L1, L2 is calculated like this. So then we can calculate small l2, which turned out to be okay, is this quantity. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah. How do we know the small uh, mm. L one? Oh, small is given. Two hundred thousand. Yeah. So there is a. a uh, a trap right here is uh, uh, you may tend to think will L1 plus L2 equal 10 to the power of 6. Uh, that's what, that was my first impression when I tried to begin to solve there, right? It's not quite, not quite true, right? Because the, the loading condition is different, okay? Yeah. So not necessarily you, you add them together is going to be a 10 to the power of 6. Okay? Yeah. 10 to the power of 6 is the only value when you are subjected to, say, 10. Right? Yeah. So, any questions? That's basically... Hmm? Plug it in already. So that's all about the bearing, okay? That's all about bearing here. So now let's move on. Any question? If you don't get it, let's move on to screws and fasteners. Okay, so what we're going to do is, uh, well, we're going to look at uh, uh, different kind of thread forms. Okay, so those are the basics of thread forms. And we're going to develop an de understanding of power screw mechanics. Okay, and then from power screw, uh, we're going to uh, stress and stress combinations on the power screw threads. And then uh, in the next lecture, we'll look at uh, threaded fasteners uh, for body joints. Okay, so what's the stiffness? How do we analyze the failure or design? For the feet here, for to against the feet here for uh, body joints. Okay, yeah. So uh, over a picture. So finally, we're moving away from this location. So we're gonna look at uh, this portion here and this portion over here. Okay. So power screw is uh, considered as a rotational to linear uh, energy transformation, and uh, uh, fasteners uh, are considered uh, for uh, application of uh, uh, joints. Right. Okay, so first question. This is a Boeing 747. So take a guess how many number of uh, uh, screws and fasteners that be used for a typical 747? 500,000. A million. Five, what? Yeah, sure. Come, yeah, count me. So. Two and a half minutes. Yeah. So, yeah, and then some of them cost, right, more than a dollar, not, not like uh, the ones we're using. So now you can imagine, right, how important the screws are, fasteners, rivets are, and uh, how expensive the airplane should be. Some anatomies or, or terminologies for thread, okay, very much similar to worm gear, actually, a lot of uh, uh, terminology, okay. Uh, first of all, the important one is to call it peach. Okay, peach. So peach is a uh, quantity basically measured, okay, along the threads, okay, from one to the additional thread. That's the distance from this to there. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
so the when you measure the pH, you know, often in time, uh, it's hard to measure just uh, uh, the distance between two adjacent uh, threads. You you actually probably will use a ruler and you measure uh, a certain number of threads, okay? And then you divide it by uh, by that, okay? You get uh, the the pH. Yeah. Uh, lead angle. So that's the angle basically if you twist a nut, okay, for one turn along this screw right here, then the distance the nut travels is the lead angle. Okay? So for single thread, okay, for single thread, then the lead angle, right, will be the same as the pH P for single thread. Okay? Sometimes you have a double thread, okay? Double thread or triple thread. Basically, you consider you have a, a, a two strings, and you wrap the two strings at the same time around the body. Okay, so that's double thread. So then, in that case, if you twist the nut for one turn, it actually travels two times the pitch, small p. Okay, yeah. Thread angle this is basically the angle over here. We're going to look at that. Uh, that's a thread form. So typically, it's a thirty degree. Okay for this kind of a uh, screw. For power screw, it's actually 29 degree. Okay? Yeah. And uh, some important parameters, uh, particularly if you go to a hardware shop, you buy, and pitch is one, the other one is the diameter, you know, the major diameter here. So major diameter is the distance, it's a diameter basically uh, from uh, one end, right, from one edge to the other edge, okay? Or the screw body over here as indicated. That's the major diameter. Minor diameter is the diameter measured from uh, the root of one end and to the other end. Okay, that's minor diameter. Okay. Mean diameter, or sometimes we call it also called pitch diameter. Okay, so in pitch diameter, uh, it's like the gear. You have a pitch circle, right? But uh, not exactly the same. So it's a it's a quantity. Okay, it's a, it's a uh, dimension between the mean di between the minor diameter and the major diameter, so it's somewhere in between here. Okay, yeah. And the p the pitch diameter can be calculated. Okay, well I'll show you for a few formula based on the dimension, based on the two, uh, based on the thread form. Okay, of this uh, of the screw. H represent is called a thread depth. Okay, so basically from the crest to the root. Okay, so this little distance, right? And that's H, okay? That's H. That's called thread depth. So crest is over here, and root is there, right? Yeah. Uh, lambda is called lead angle, okay? Lead angle. Sorry, I'm going to say not lambda not equal to two. So I'm going to say lead equal to P here, okay? Lambda is the lead angle. So lead angle is angle. Basically, there's an inclination of the thread, and if you measure the angle between this line and the vertical line here. That's the lead angle, okay? Because the, in the next uh, lecture, uh, you can imagine this. If you unwrap, right? So this is the thread, and then you wrap it up around the screw body. If you unwrap that, you will get, basically, if you unwrap that, you will get a ramp, right? You get a ramp here. And the angle of that ramp, okay, is the lead angle lambda, okay? So basically, it's how inclined this a thread is, right? Yeah. There are uh, two different standards, okay? Uh, there is the basically uh, unite, u unified standard that's for American standard, okay? And this, uh, the other one is the metric standards, okay? Yeah. So uh, the two form basically a gar gu uh, guided you with these uh, two standards, okay? Uh, for u uni unified standards, sometimes you see a UN, sometimes you see a UNR, uh, you, you, the R at here essentially represent uh, at the root of the thread. It's rounded. Okay, that's the basically indication. I'll show you that. Okay, yeah. uh, the standards are guided uh, basically by uh, those uh, ASME uh, standards there. First, the basic okay thread profile. So basic ones are referred to uh, refer to this either UN or M class. So the drawing here is not quite uh, uh, correct. Uh, for basic ones here, it's uh, basically, it's like this, okay, yeah. So 
if you connect that, they, they will intersect at the certain vertices, right? But there is no rounding here, okay? There is no rounding. Okay? That's the basic thread profile, okay? So uh, you have the other end, right? The internal, external, so there shouldn't be this portion here, okay? So this rounding here, okay? And those are dimensions for basic profile. So for example, uh, from the root, right, to the uh, to the vertex of that the triangle here, it's a quarter h, and the h is uh, square root of three over two times the pH. Okay, so that's the that's a thread form. Okay, and alpha is thirty degree. Okay, so it's a pretty easy to calculate actually this one here. So basically, if you form this triangle, this is basically uh, equal sided triangle here, right? Yeah, and then you can calculate uh, the h based on 30, 60 degrees here. That's how you get this quantity. Okay, yeah. So anyway, uh, some other dimensions. This is h over eight on the top over here. Okay, so this h over four. So those are basically thread format. Then based on the dimension, then you can calculate that the mean that uh, the minor diameter, basically the smaller diameter, okay, from here to the, to the other side of the screw, right? It's this guy, and the pH diameter, okay, dP, is this, okay. So now this is basically the formula for basic, okay, thread uh, profile. Is that good? Yeah. And then we actually will use is not the basic one, we actually use either the ISO profile or the next one, the UNR profile. So in the table that I give it to you, there's a table A-1, there's another table A-2 on the second page, okay? So this, these two tables, they are the ISO profile, the metric series, and also the UNR. So I think A-1 is this guy here, okay? Refer to this profile. So the difference between this uh, profile and the basic one is, uh, instead of that, uh, uh, you know, perfect uh, uh, cutting at the bottom there, you know, you have a rounding at here. Okay, and you have a rounding here. Okay, so because this little rounding, you actually change the dimension for the d for the for the um, this is dr for the minor diameter and also the pH diameter slightly. Okay, yeah. So. Uh, later you can take a look at my lecture notes uh, given this uh, profile here you can calculate based on this dimension that you can find that this dr equal to this and dp equal to this okay yeah so if you look at the footnotes of the table 8-1 and 8-2 and this is the two formula okay giving the footnotes okay so if you're interested how the, f the formula derived you can come back to this diagram here and then you can do a little bit of uh, calculation. All right? Yeah. So that's metric. And then for the UN, very similar. Okay? But the only difference is the UN one has a little bit sharper rounding. So you see, uh, for the previous one, this is uh, the rounding here from here to the tape is a 1 6 H. Right? It's 1 6 H. But the, for the UN profile, it's 1 8 Okay, H times H. So it's a bit of a sharper rounding than the uh, metric series. And because of that, then the calculation of dr and dp is a slightly different. And that's what you're going to find at the footnote of the table A-2. Okay? Yeah, was it A-2? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So anyway, just the background uh, story as to how that... Uh, Table uh, A-1, A-2 form and you write. And second of all, tensile stress area. So this is also one uh, quantity that you can find in the table A-1 and A-2. And I believe uh, there's uh, two columns there, right? Yeah, there are two columns. One column uh, is for coarse, the other column is for fine. Okay? Yeah. So you can take a look at that. Okay? So what's tensile stress area? Basically, if you have a you have a, a screw and you subject the threaded screw to uh, uh, to uh, to a pure tensile loading, right? Yeah. Then the question is how much tensile stress exists 
on a screw body, right? Yeah. Uh, the first intuition often in time is we can calculate the tensile stress using the minor diameter. Okay? Yeah. We can use this area basically of the cross section area is a minor diameter. But that actually turned out to be not so accurate. So uh the actual tensile stress should be calculated based on an average okay of this minor and a pitch diameter. So this is basically how that column of stre tensile stress error is calculated. It's calculated based on this. So basically it's a pi r square, right? Pi r square. Then the r right here is that uh, 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 the mean between the, the pitch diameter and the minor. So this is the diameter. So we need the radius. So we divide it by, two, uh, by 4, right? We divide it by 4 to get the radius. Okay, so I mean divided by two is the mean diameter, right? And then you divide it by another two, you get the radius. Okay, then you plug it into pi r square, and you get this. So uh, if uh, if you are interested, you can plug in a few numbers, and then you can get you can see that that's how that uh, numbers right in the table a dash one a dash two. Okay, so then the tensile stress will be just simply the f over the tensile stress area, okay? So we will actually need this quantity, okay, for uh, later uh, calculations. You actually need to look up a few things, okay? So he here I have a snapshot of uh, part of the a table A-1 and A-2, okay? Okay, so uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. We'll take a look at the how to read this one here, but uh, uh, this is course. This is the fine, right? Uh, for inch series, okay, it gives you another quantity called thread per inch. Okay, thread per inch here. Okay, thread per inch. So for the same, basically, you look at that. For the same major diameter, the fine series UNF has more thread per inch than the coarse, right? So that's pretty obvious. The inverse of this quantity, this is the thread per inch, okay? The inverse, so this this is called basically something called like TPI, okay? So the inverse of a TPI is what? The pitch, exactly, right? It's a pitch small p, okay? Yeah. So that's how we're going to read this one here. For the metric one, it gives you the pitch directly, okay? Yeah. Okay. So that's that table, two tables there. Okay, so let's keep continue here a little bit. Multiple threads. That's what I'm saying there. You know, you may have a uh, uh, you may have a, a, a double thread or triple thread or even more, right? Uh, but uh, the only effect is the lead is the number of threads okay, times the scoop each. Okay, yeah, that's one. And then there's another thing is you have a left hand left. Uh, a uh, left-handed uh, thread, you also have a right-handed thread, just like the helical gear, right? Uh, one way to look at it, you can you can use the idea of a helical gear, you can put it right on top of the uh, desktop, then you look at the where that thread is inclined to, right? Yeah, and then you can tell from that, right-handed or left-handed, okay? Yeah. Or, you can what you can do is, uh, you can twist uh, the thread, okay? And then, basically, you look at the where did it go? You know, if you twist it clockwise, if it goes away from you, it's right-handed. Okay. Otherwise, it's uh, left-handed. Right? Yeah. Okay. So here is something uh, you will be tested to be able to read the de from the designations. Okay. For uh, a typical, basically, uh, profile. Okay. So there are two different profile, right? There's the UN. And there's uh, also the metric. So this is a basically a typical labeling you will find in a hardware shop. So if you look at this, it's the UN series. And the first number that you get is the major diameter. Okay, That's the major diameter. Second number you get is the thread per inch. So how much pitch in this case? Right, so 0 0.05 is a pitch, okay? Yeah. 
And UNC is uh, the course <coughs> series, the course series. Uh, a here represents uh, whether it's an external thread or internal threads. And the last one, LH, whether it's left-handed or right-handed. Okay? Yeah. So, um, mo mostly what you need to read is, is is this guy here, right? That's this. Okay? So if you look at your uh, table A-1, can you find the row for under UNC with a major diameter 0 0.5 so make sure I have the right number in here right was that right a yeah a dash 2 eight, 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 uh, table a 2 so under the course series the course? yes uh, the course. major diameter is a 0 0.5 mm -hmm. was that right yeah. yeah so the reason I'm mentioning this is I'm using UNC here, right? Now sometimes you know you got to be careful. If I write UNF, actually won't be right because you look at the fine series. Under the fine series, for a major diameter 0 0.5, for for major diameter 0 0.5, what's the UNF series uh, for the thread per inch number? 28, right? 20 for fine, yeah. Oh, 20 for fine. So that's wrong. There. It's 14. Can I see? <laughs> yeah, 13. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I got myself wrong here. Huh? Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, I made him probably quarter. <laughs> but anyway, I think uh, I made my point, right? Yeah. So you got to basically understand the the reading from the table there. Okay. Good. Uh, so the two refer to a certain fate. Yeah. This is a metric. Okay, this is a metric one. So I always start with M. A second letter, a second number is uh, the peach. Okay, uh, sorry, the the major diameter. Okay, and the second number is the peach. So 0 0.75 millimeter. <coughs> okay. Now uh, the rest of them uh, you don't really necessary to care. Uh, a lot of them, they, they are basically referred to the tolerance uh, of uh, major diameter peach. Diameter. <coughs> and the last one here. Uh, rep represent uh, the the right-handed or or uh, left-handed uh, threads. Okay. Yeah. So that's how you read this. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Okay. So we'll continue this uh, next lecture. Okay, the table again. Yeah. Uh, any leftovers of the handouts? You can bring it back to me. It should be. It should be fine. Yeah. I don't know. Where it is. Yeah, it has to be changed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, anybody has a group of two that I can put another of you guys? Uh, 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 yeah. Anyone has a group of two? Anybody has a group of three? Want to take one more? What's going on here? <laughs> less, less work. Yeah, you have less work. Anybody has a group of three? What, how many groups do you have now? You've already started. You already started. So it's kind of, bring somebody now. Will? I have a group of four. Yeah. 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 That's true. That's too many. That's right. Uh, 
So you want to ask around yourself? Sure. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like, if there's a group of three, you can join as a group of four, uh, no, right? You need. Yeah. I don't, I don't think I have a group. Do you have any group? Like I'm pretty sure my friend here will be with me, but I don't know. How know. many of you guys in a group? Uh, two or three. So okay. So then, if you don't mind, uh, I don't know. Yeah, sure. More. Yeah. Let's let's work. Split up. So. Yeah.